Very good evening. Welcome to our evening prayer on this Monday, the 17th of May, 2021. Very good evening to you all. And our evening prayer begins with our prayers of preparation. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and clothe us with power from on high. Alleluia. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, to you be glory and praise for ever. Ascended to your right hand on high, the ascended Christ shows the prince of love and bestows on us the gifts of grace. As your spirit renews the face of the earth, may we bring forth the fruit of the spirit and reveal your glory in all the world. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. And so our hymn for this evening is uh, a Pentecost hymn, Come, Holy Ghost, our hearts inspire. Come, Holy Ghost, our hearts inspire. Let us thine influence prove. Source of the old prophetic fire, fountain of life and love. Come, Holy Ghost, form by thee, thy prophets wrote and spoke. Unlock thy truth, thy self the key, unseal the sacred book. Expand thy wings, celestial dove, Brood on our nature's night, on our disordered spirits move, and let there now be light. God through himself we then shall know, if thou within us shine. And sound with all thy saints below the depths of love divine. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful, let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. And so our psalm for this evening is Psalm 18. I love you, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my crag, my fortress, and my deliverer. My God, my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield, the horn of my salvation and my stronghold. I cried to the Lord in my anguish, and I was saved from my enemies. The cords of death entwined me, and the torrents of destruction overwhelmed me. The cords of the pit fastened about me, the snares of death entangled me. In my distress I called upon the Lord and cried out to my God for help. He heard my cry from his temple, and my cry came to his ears. The earth trembled and quaked, the foundations of the mountain shook, they reeled because he was angry, smoke rose from his nostrils, a consuming fire went out of his mouth. Burning coals blazed from him. He parted the heavens and came down, and thick darkness was under his feet. He rode upon the cherubim and flew, and came flying on the winds of the wings. He made darkness his covering around him, thick waters and dark clouds his pavilion. From the brightness of his presence through the clouds burst hailstones and coals of fire. The Lord also thundered out of heaven, the Most High uttered his voice with hailstones and coals of fire. He sent down his arrows and scattered them. He hurled down lightnings and put them to flight. The springs of the ocean were seen at the foundations of the earth and covered at your rebuke, O Lord, at the blast of the breath of your displeasure. He drew, he reached down from on high and took me and drew me out of the mighty waters. 
He delivered me from my strong enemy, from foes that were too mighty for me. They came upon me in the day of my trouble, but the Lord was my upholder. He brought me out into a place of liberty. He rescued me because he delighted in me. The Lord rewarded me after my righteous dealing. According to the cleanness of my hands, he recompensed me. Because I had kept the ways of the Lord and had not gone wickedly away from my God, for I had an eye to all his laws and did not cast out his commandments from me. I was also wholehearted before him and kept myself from iniquity. Therefore the Lord rewarded me after my righteous dealing, which, according to the cleanness of my hands, in his sight. With the faithful you show yourself faithful. With the true you show yourself true. With the pure you show yourself pure. But with the crooked you show yourself perverse. The Lord lives, and blessed be my rock. Praise be the God of my salvation, even the God who vindicates me and subdues the peoples under me. You that deliver me from my enemies, you will set, up, set me up above my foes. From the violent you will deliver me. Therefore will I sing, will I praise. Therefore will I give you thanks, O Lord, among the nations and sing praises to your name. To the one who gives great victory to the king and shows faithful love to his anointed, to David and his seed forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. <coughs> so, excuse me. And a reading from the book of Numbers, chapter 22. The Israelites sent out and camped in the plains of Moab across the Jordan from Jericho. Now Balak, son of Zippor, saw that all, the, all that Israel had done to the Amorites. Moab was in great dread of the people because they were so numerous. Moab was overcome with fear of the people of Israel. And Moab said to the elders of Midian, This horde will now lick us up. We'll now lick up all that is around us as an ox, li ox lifts. Sorry, as an ox licks up the grass of the field. Now Balak, son of Zippor, was king of Moab at that time. He sent messengers to Balaam, son of Beor, at Peor, which Pethor, which is on the Euphrates in the land of Amau, to summon him, saying, "A people has come out of Egypt." They have spread over the face of the earth, and they have settled next to me. Come now, curse this people for me, since they are stronger than I. Perhaps I shall be able to defeat them and drive them from the land. For I know that whomsoever you bless is blessed, and whomsoever you curse is cursed. So the elders of Moab and the elders of Midian departed from the departed with the fees for divination in their hand, and they came to Balaam and sent him, gave him Balak's message. He said to them, Stay here tonight, and I will bring word back to you, just as the Lord speaks to me. So the officials of Moab stayed with Balaam. God came to Balaam and said, Who are these men with you? Balaam said to God, King Balak, of Zip, son of Zippor of Moab, has sent me this message. A people has come out of Egypt and has spread over the face of the earth. Come now, curse them for me. Perhaps I shall be able to fight against them and drive them out. God said to Balaam, You shall not go with them. You shall not curse the people, for they are blessed. So Balaam rose in the morning and said to the officials of Balak, Go to your own land, for the Lord has refused to let me go with you. So the officials of Moab rose and went to Balak and said, Balaam refuses to come with us. Once again, Balak sent messengers, more numerous and more distinguished than these. They came to Balaam and said to him, Thus says Balak, son of Zippor, Do not let anything hinder you from coming to me, for I will surely do you great honor, and whatever you say to me I will do. Come, curse this people for me. But Balaam replied to the servants of Balak, Although Balak were to give me his house full of silver and gold, I could not go beyond the command of the Lord my God to do more or less. 
You remain here as the others did, so that I may learn what more the Lord may say to me. That night, God came to Balaam and said, If the officials have come to summon you, get up and go with them, but do only what I tell you to do. So Balaam got up in the morning, saddled his donkey, and went with the officials of Moab. God's anger was kindled because he was going, and the angel of the Lord took his stand in the road as his adversary. Now he was riding on the donkey, and his two servants were with him. The donkey saw the angel of the Lord standing in the road with a sword drawn in his hand, so the donkey turned off the road and went into a field. And Balaam struck the donkey to turn it back to the road. Then the angel of the Lord stood in a narrow path between the vineyards with a wall on either side. When the donkey saw the angel of the Lord, it scraped against the wall and scraped Balaam's foot against the wall, so he struck it again. Then the angel of the Lord went ahead and stood in a narrow place where there was no way to turn either to the right or to the left. When the donkey saw the angel of the Lord, it lay down under Balaam. Balaam's anger was kindled, and he struck the donkey with his staff. Then the Lord opened the mouth of the donkey, and it said to Balaam, What have I done to you, that you have struck me these three times? Balaam said to the donkey, Because you have made a fool of me. I wish I had a sword in my hand. I would kill you right away. But the donkey said to Balaam, Am I not your donkey, which you have ridden all your life to this day? Have I been in in the habit of treating you in this way? And he said, No. Then the Lord opened the eyes of Balaam, and he saw the angel of the Lord standing in the road with his drawn sword in his hand, and he bowed down, falling on his face. The angel of the Lord said to him, Why have you struck your donkey these three times? I have come out as an adversary, because your way is perverse before me. The donkey saw me and turned away from me these three times, If it had not turned away from me, surely I would now have killed you and let it live. Then Balaam said to the angel of the Lord, I have sinned, for I did not know that you were standing in the road to oppose me. Now therefore, if it is displeasing to you, I will return home. The angel of the Lord said to Balaam, Go with them, but speak only what I tell you to speak. So Balaam went with the officials of Balak. Here ends the first reading. And the song of God's children, the canticle. The spirit of the Father who raised Christ Jesus from the dead gives life to the people of God. Alleluia. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set us free from the law of sin and death. All who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God, for we have received the spirit that enables us to cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness that we are children of God, and if God's children, then heirs of God. If heirs of God, then fellow heirs with Christ, since we suffer with him now, that we may be glorified with him. These sufferings that we now endure are not worth comparing to the glory that shall be revealed, for the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. The Spirit of the Father who raised Christ Jesus from the dead gives life to the people of God. Alleluia. And our second reading from St. Luke's Gospel, chapter 7. One of the Pharisees asked Jesus to eat with him, and so he went to the Pharisee's house and took his place at the table. And a woman in the city who was a sinner, having learned that he was eating at the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster jar of ointment. She stood beside him at his feet, weeping, and began to bathe his feet with her tears and dry them with her hair. Then she continued kissing his feet and anointing them with the ointment. Now when the Pharisee who had invited him saw it, he said to himself, If this woman were a prophet... Sorry, if this man were a prophet, he would have known who and what kind of woman this is who is touching him, that she is a sinner. Jesus spoke up and said to him, Simon, I have something to say to you. Teacher, he replied, speak. A certain creditor had two debtors. 
One owed 500 denarii and the other 50. When they could not pay, he cancelled the debts of both of them. Now, which of them will love him more? Simon answered, I suppose the one from whom he cancelled the greater debt. And Jesus said to him, You have judged rightly. Then turning towards the woman, he said to Simon, Do you see this woman? I entered your house, you gave me no water for my feet, but she has bathed my feet with her tears and dried them with her hair. You gave me no kiss, but from the time I came in, she has not stopped kissing my feet. You did not anoint my head with oil, but she has anointed my feet with ointment. Therefore I tell you, his sins, which were many, have been forgiven, since she has shown great love. But the one to whom little is forgiven loves little. And he said to her, your sins are forgiven. But those who were at table with him began to say amongst themselves, who is this who even forgives sins? And he said to the woman, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. Here ends the second reading and the responsory. When you send forth your spirit, we are created, you renew the face of the earth. When you send forth your spirit, we are created, you renew the face of the earth. O Lord, how manifold are your works, in wisdom you have made them all. You renew the face of the earth. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. When you send forth your spirit, we are created, you renew the face of the earth. And the Magnificat. How excellent is your name in all the world. You have set your glory above the heavens. Alleluia. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. He has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm and has scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember his promise of mercy, promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. How excellent is your name in all the world. You have set your glory above the heavens. Alleluia. And so we come to our prayers of intercession. We pray today for the Diocese of Butare in the Église Anglicane du Rwanda, praying for them and for their leadership. We pray for the Wrexham Mission area this part of the month, praying for Jonathan, our mission area leader. We pray for John, the Archdeacon of Wrexham, for Gregory, our bishop. We pray today especially for St. Margaret's Church here in Wrexham, praying for a recovery of their finances, the repairs and improvements to the building. We also pray for a vision of their ministry and outreach of the church to Garden Village and to Acton as they begin to reassess that. We pray for the work of the missionary review team, and we pray for that work as it is reviewed and as we work with the team to renew our mission and our vision here in Wrexham. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the needs of the world around us, praying especially at this time for the people of Israel and Palestine, for peace between them, for a just and lasting peace settlement that may prove a good foundation for future work and for future peace in the land that they share. We pray too for the people of India and all those who are continuing to suffer because of the coronavirus outbreak. But we also pray for the town around us uh, as many businesses open for the first time today. We pray for those who work in them, for those whose livelihoods have been affected, 
and we give thanks for the fact that this parish church is now open for visitors and we give thanks for the visitors who have visited today and for the welcomers whose work is so valuable in so many different ways. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have asked us to pray for them, praying for those developing the vaccine here in Wrexham for producing it and for rolling it out across the country. We continue to pray for Colin and all those in nursing and residential homes, for Daniel and all those who are in prison, and we pray for their families at this time. We pray for the sick amongst them, Richard, Tim, Louise, Derek, Joanne, Mo, Malcolm, Gordon, James, Mal, Anne, Nancy, Peggy, Mark, Harry, Mavanwi, Dot, Peter, Simon, and Chris. We pray for those who are bereaved, among them Les Chamberlain, and we pray for the repose of the souls of the faithful departed, among them Carol Chamberlain. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we bring you our own prayers and petitions, the concerns of our hearts, and our own thanksgivings for this day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God, the King of glory, you have exalted your only Son with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. We beseech you, leave us not comfortless, but send your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exalt us to the place where our Saviour Christ is gone before, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Let being made one by the power of the Spirit, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. May the Spirit kindle in us the fire of God's love. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Thank you very much for joining me in what was a slightly longer than usual evening prayer.